This is the Pythonic Accountant, and in today's episode, we're going to play with a library called Faker to try and use it to create some subledger detail for accounts payable. So what we're going to do is use the various components of the Faker library to create fake transactions in a subledger detail file. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the concept of a subledger file, oftentimes in ERP systems or in accounting systems, there are transactions in the general ledger that are typically generated from another system outside of the general ledger. So for an accounts payable transaction to hit the general ledger and record an increase or decrease in accounts payable, oftentimes that will come from the accounts payable submodule or subledger. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create some fake transactions in the subledger. So I've already installed the Faker library, but if you're using Anaconda, then you can use this Conda install Faker to install it. Uh, there's some really good documentation about the different types of things you can use Faker for, and it's really cool. You can create a lot of fake data of different types. And so some of the ones that we used are like fake company. Um, we'll show you some other ones as we go through it. So the libraries we're going to use in this are the decimal library. Actually, we don't need the decimal library. That one comes from Faker, so ignore that one. We're going to use date time and named tuple. We're going to use pandas, and then we're going to use Faker itself. So let's go ahead and load those up. And we create a fake variable that is going to be used to get our different fake data. So let's actually show an example. Let's do fake.name and, oops, got to run it. And this just gives us a random person's name. And you can just run it and it'll give you all the fake names that you need. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. So what we're doing is we're going to create a named tuple called subtransaction. And this will be our individual transaction that we'll create. Um, I've listed here the very simple five fields that we're going to use in our subledger table. We're going to have invoice number, which we're just going to increase that one consecutively. We're going to have date, so the date of the transaction. We're going to have vendor number. We're going to have transaction type, and it's either going to be an invoice or a payment, and that's going to be based upon the whether the value is positive or negative. And then we're going to have transaction amount, the amount of the transaction. Now, I don't think we're going to get fancy enough to have a actually... Yeah, let's see how fancy we want to get. We'll, we'll see here. But what I was going to say is I don't know how fancy we're going to get with invoice number uh, because theoretically, if you have the original invoice, then you make a payment against that invoice. You'd hope that the payment in the original invoice would have the same invoice number. But we'll see if we decide to be too lazy to do that. So first, we're going to actually create some helper functions for us that will help generate the different data that we need. So we're going to create this get date function, and all this is doing is giving us a date between uh, January 1st, 2019, and December 31st, 2019. And so let's see what that looks like. Get dates, and sure enough, this is giving us a bunch of random dates in between all of the days of that year. Uh, the next one gets us a fake vendor name. So let's see what this looks like, and that's just a fake company name. So that's fine. Uh, vendor number, what we're doing here is we're, we're vendor number, we're just going to use the, it's not really a number, it's just kind of a short version of the vendor, and we're going to use the first six characters of the vendor name, all caps, no spaces, we're also going to exclude commas or dashes. So what that's going to look like is get vendor number, and then we're going to feed in get vendor, and this should give us a random response back of just the first six of the random vendors that we're getting, but in all caps. So that's pretty cool. Um, next is get amount. So we're just going to get a decimal amount between negative 100,000 and 100,000. We're going to round it to two. And so get amount will give us that transaction amount of positive or negative. And then finally, transaction type, that's going to feed in the amount. And if it's Let's just say if it's uh, greater than zero, we're calling it an invoice. So we're saying we're increasing that accounts payable balance. And if it's uh, otherwise, then it is a payment. So 
let's see if we can try to create a transaction here. So let's say we're going to call sub transaction. So sub TXN. And right here we've got invoice number, date. So we said invoice number is just going to be, let's call it one. <laughs> date is going to be get date. Uh, vendor number is going to be, well, this is going to get tricky. So what we're going to have to do in order for our vendor number to actually match our vendor, we're going to have to create one variable beforehand that gets our vendor. Because otherwise we're going to be calling get vendor twice and our vendor number is not going to match our vendor. Uh, so let's do vendor equals get vendor. Now for our vendor number, we're going to do vendor, vendor number, vendor, and then, and then transaction type. We're going to have to do the same thing with amount. So amount equals get amount. And we're going to do get txn type amount and amount and sure enough that works very cool so you've got your subledger transaction invoice number is one here's your date there's your vendor number is cooper your vendor name is cooper higgins and hughes uh, the transaction type is a payment and your transaction amount is decimal so let's actually make this a random number as well so i'm going to get a new create a new function called def get invoice number and return fake. You know what? Let's just use the random. So from random import randint. Let's see if that works. Let's just try this rand int. It's going to be between 1 and 10,000. Perfect. So return. Rand int one ten thousand. So then we're gonna do invoice number is gonna be get invoice number. Cool. So now we're just kind of randomizing that. Who cares? We're not gonna repeat ones. Maybe we'll get fancy later on, but whatever. So this is our now construct for creating an individual line. What we want to do is we want to create say a hundred thousand individual lines and export that to a csv file and that'll be our fake subledger detail file so what we're going to do is we're going to basically say uh, let's iterate for uh, let's see so in let's see subledger activity equals empty list we're going to do this really simple and so for blank and because we don't need to actually use this variable we're just want to iterate a um, hundred thousand times so for that in range 100,000 we txn equals uh, actually we're gonna have to just basically redo this so start here and tab that over and this is gonna be txn equals that and then we do subledger account dot append txn let's see if this works so that should give us uh, let's see for oh forgot the word in in range so this is now <laughs> it might take a minute or two because it's actually having to run and randomly generate these things uh let's see it's randomly generating one two three four five almost six so six things a hundred thousand times so it'll be interesting to see how long that actually takes but uh python is pretty powerful so we'll give it a minute maybe or less and when that's complete we're going to take that list yeah it's done we're gonna take that list and we're gonna load it up into a data frame so let's just check out the first few subledger accounts uh first five and that's looking good now let's do uh, let's do df equals pd dot data frame subledger accounts that should work just fine df dot head and cool you've got invoice number you've got date you've got vendor number you've got vendor name you've got the transaction type and a transaction amount this looks pretty awesome so this is uh, now a fake data set 
of a uh, accounts payable subledger detail file that we're going to now export into CSV. It's df.2 CSV. I'm going to call it ap subledger 2019.csv index equals false. And let's see what that looks like when it loads up. Do, 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 do. There we go. And that is our CSV file. Very cool. Well, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, we'll hopefully have some more videos where we can play with this and maybe even create general ledger detail from this. Because as you can see, there's no general ledger accounts yet, but each one of these will generate two, I think, per line. So if you like the video, please click like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. And as always, hope you have a great day.